Uh, hi everyone, thanks for coming along today. My name is David McNeil. I'm a journalist with The uh, Economist newspaper and I am a co-chair of the PAC committee which organizes events at the club. Uh, well, you'll see our new seating arrangements to take account of uh, the trying circumstances we find ourselves in. This is called social distancing where we try to keep you all apart so you don't get sick. Uh, let's hope it works. Um, and our two speakers today have come specifically to talk uh, about um, uh, the corona issue and uh, also the Diamond Princess and the need for uh, what they call a hospital ship. Uh, now, I just want to make a public service announcement. The speakers that have advertised Koichi Sunada, uh, who's a professor um, and uh, uh, professor and the uh, head of the mobile international mobile hospital international he cannot make it he's sick unfortunately um, and we're told it's not the corona so we wish him odaiji uh, and he, instead of uh, Sunada sensei we have uh, Yoshihiro Yamaguchi sensei uh, he is uh, a professor at Kyorin University School of Medicine. Uh, and the other speaker today uh, is Tadahisa Kagimoto. Uh, he's a director of Mobile Hospital International. Um, just to explain the context in which we're having this discussion, um, as you recall, the Diamond Princess, which was anchored off Yokohama for about 39 days. Uh, at one point, it was the biggest story in the world. Uh, around 700 people on that boat, 3,700 people were on the boat, and around 700 got sick. Uh, and uh, what that has shown is the uh, unexpected medical emergencies that crop up, uh, and increasingly crop up as natural disasters become more common. Uh, Mobile Hospital International has been advocating for a floating hospital uh, after witnessing in particular the 2011 uh, Tohoku disaster, the earthquake and tsunami of course, and before that uh, Kobe. Uh, and they're trying to make uh, a ship available in time for the Olympics and of course as we know it's very likely now the Olympics will be postponed and uh, I've just been talking to Kagimoto sensei and he says well that works in their favor because it gives them more time to arrange for the hospital ship. Uh, what they're going to talk about today is the need for uh, a mobile medical center in times of crisis. Uh, they're going to show a slideshow, I believe, so do give them the best of your attention. Uh, just if you haven't already, can you make sure your mobile phones are switched off so they don't go off and disturb the speakers? Thank you very much. Those are your Hello, uh, my name is Yamaguchi. I'm very happy to be here. And I will talk about the uh, problems of infection uh, management in the cruise ship Diamond Princess, and also about how it is different uh, from the hospital ship. As you know, um, an outbreak of coronavirus disease on cruise ship uh, led to uh, uh, quarantine for nearly four weeks at the port of Yokohama. And a total of 619 passengers and 20 crew had been infected. Uh, by the analysis of, uh, of various institutes, uh, three problems were cl clarified. The first problem, problem is incompleteness of the isolation. The, even during the uh, quarantine uh, inspection, uh, the uh, passengers still hung freely, ate in the in a buffet, and enjoy theater up uh, uh, programs. Uh, based on the data, it is clear that substantial transmission of COVID-19 had been occurring prior to implementation of. Uh, quarantine of February 5th. However, transmission appeared to have occurred mostly among crew or within passenger uh, cabins uh, toward the, the end of the quarantine uh, period. The second problem is difficulty of zoning. Due to the nature of the cruise ship, individual isolation of all those aboard was not possible. It was not able to move ill patient to other rooms 
because of no vacancy in the ship. As a result, 81% of cases among confirmed passengers or crew occurred in crew or passengers from cabins with your previous confirmed cases. The third problem is insufficient ability for the infection control of the crew. Many of them did not wear protect protective gear and ha uh, had no experience in dealing with epidemic. COVID-19 was likely transmitted first from passengers to crew members and then subse subsequently spread among the crew, especially among food service uh, workers. So, oh, based on the above mentioned lessons, it is following three points that should note in preparing for the hospital ship. Um, by the way, uh, um, next my presentation, presentation will focus on the, the structure of the ship and the infection control. My conclusion is like this. The ship is basically unsuitable in dealing with the epidemic. When you use a ship under, the, under this situation, it is necessary to run the, the structural characteristic of the ship and to recognize the weak point. This is a figure of the vertical section of the cruise ship Diamond Princess. From the viewpoint of reconstruction characteristics against the damage of the ship body, the number of the division where the ship leaks and the placement of the watertight partition are determined. And the fire prevention division and the watertight subdivision are designed on the uh, equivalent a borderline. So basically, the ship is compartmentalized by verticality. The air condition, conditioning system becomes the closed cycle in a perpendicular division so that a fire does not spread in other fire prevention division through an air conditioning duct. So from the aspect of managing air conditioning too, the ship is compartmentalized by verticality. It is not an exception in USNS Mercy that was remodeled from an oil tanker in lower uh, figures. Uh, on the other hand, the medical person always wants to develop zoning horizontally because the vertical zoning is disadvantage in moving patient. The uh, figure of the bottom, sh bottom sh shows the uh, plan of zoning by the self-defense forces in Hakuo that is uh, uh, charter ferry boat. We need to recognize that the medical zoning and the ship structural zoning should be opposed uh, necessarily. So um, this is uh, my conclusion again. Uh, medical needs to run a ship and the ship also needs to run medical. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Kagemoto Sensei? Hi. 
Again, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I'm currently working as a director of Mobile Hospital International, and also I'm running a biotech company called Chirios. And, and today I'd like to talk about um, what we have been trying to establish through this organization. And um, this organization has been, was started by Dr. Uh, Snada, who uh, unfortunately could not make it today. But after Tofka earthquake, there was, as we remember, it's been nine years so far. And Dr. Snada has been thinking what we could do better in the past. And the point I'd like to make today is Japan is surrounded by ocean. And if we had a hospital ship back then, when we experienced talk earthquake, or maybe Kobe earthquake, we could save more lives. That was the whole purpose we started this organization. And to be honest, it's been a quite lonely battle in the last nine years. But again, um, I'm gonna make these points again, but um, the real threat for Japan is no war. It is natural disaster. And due to the global warmings, the speed of natural disaster is getting faster and more frequent. And in order to cope with the challenges we are going to face, I think we should, as a Japan, as a country, and as, um, as an organization, a uh, non-government organization, we should equip Japan with Hospital of Japan or other mobilized medical capabilities to save uh, patients' lives to fight against the unforeseen uh, natural disasters. And again, thank you very, uh, very much for this opportunity. And I'd like to uh, touch base uh, uh, the geopolitical condition and situation where Japan, um, Japan is in. Japan's EZZ area is the, the world's largest, uh, sorry, uh, the world's uh, sixth largest area of um, four million 470,000 um, kilometer square meter. It is the fourth largest island country in the world and the largest island country in East Asia. And Japan has the sixth longest uh, coastline, which is as long as 29.751 kilometer. And um, unfortunately, we are, we are rich with this ocean environment and we are, we are not utilizing enough, and we don't have enough capabilities to, um, to fight against the threats coming from the ocean, too. I don't, have to, I don't think it's necessary for me to remind what we have uh, went through, but um, including myself, people do not want to remember the disaster. Once we pass those disasters, we want to forget and move on. But that our human nature is difficult for us in, in a sense that we also forget to prepare for the next one. Earthquake, tsunami, typhoon, floods, and now we are fighting against unforeseen uh, infectious disease called COVID-19. And it will be coming back for sure. And um, there are methods to stop war through maybe militarization, maybe through diplomatic um, activities, maybe through commerce. But we don't, as a human being, we don't have any method to stop natural disaster. It's kind of weird for me that uh, we will not really prepare for that part of the threat as a human being. And uh, we should learn from the past, we should be realistic, we shouldn't be depressed, but we should be prepared. And um, the type of the disaster is not, is not simple. That is the nature of the disaster. It might start from tsunami. Actually, it, it did start with earthquake, followed by tsunami, followed by nuclear threat, in a way. and. Um, I must admit, nobody can prepare for everything. That is an unrealistic uh, ex uh, expectation. But what we can do is we can prepare a system which can be applied for any type of disasters. 
in order to cope with any type of disaster, at the end of the day, we have to mobilize our medical capabilities to the place where we are facing the disaster. And we don't have enough tools today. If you look at this picture, um, when there is an earthquake, most of the roads are basically broken. Uh, ports, it's really hard to send big ships. And as you remember, uh, most of the airports were not functioning back in of earthquake. How can we fix the condition as soon as possible to save as many lives as possible? That's the theme. And one method is not enough. One hospital ship is not enough. We need hospital ship, but we need over beyond what ship can offer. And we need an overall system to fight against it. Uh, lucky enough, so far, Japanese self-defense uh, force is fighting against those uh, disasters. But as being, uh, as being a type of um, organization which historically Japanese uh, self-defense force put in, they cannot establish or they are not willing to establish hostile ship because it won't be covered by Geneva Treaty and um, it will be hard for them to authorize that kind of activities. But someone has to come up with the capability and that's the reason why we established the organization and we are moving forward. If you look around the world, um, there are so many hospital ships. Um, now we are hearing that in the United States, uh, Navy has two ships, uh, hospital ships. One is Mercy, the other one is Comfort. Now both of those ships are actively involved to fight against COVID-19. Although, as Professor Yamaguchi mentioned, uh, those ships are not designed to cope with infectious disease, uh, simply because the zoning is not right. Um, it's designed to fight during the war. Um, but having said that, they are utilized in New York and uh, Los Angeles now to supply um, extra capability, uh, to supply medical capabilities, such as testing or uh, moving some of the critical medical equipment, such as ECMO. And um, unfortunately, we, as a, uh, Japan as a country, we haven't established hospital ship after World War II. And we lack that operation. We lack the um, capabilities. But China has one, US has two, and uh, other countries, uh, Vietnam and other countries have those uh, ships. And I think it's uh, time for us to be ready. And we could invite uh, US Navy hospital ship Mercy um, back in 2018 to come to Japan, to Yokohama port. And that was quite a refreshing experience for us to actually um, go on the boat. And we could invite several senators who took a look at it. And uh, I think they could understand, they did understand how useful it can be. And the most touching part of this uh, mission was uh, we could invite um, small children, uh, like 10 years old. And they like the idea that uh, Japan will be equipped by one day, one day equipped by um, some medical capabilities to uh, save more lives. And uh, we could so far uh, successfully um, establish um, a bipartisan federation uh, with several senators um, over across the different parties. And the mission we have with this uh, bipartisan federation is to establish a new law to promote and legalize hospital ship in Japan. Funny things to say, but in order to register hospital in Japan, it requires physical address. But hospital do not have an address. There's a tiny bit of the legal pieces we have to mend. And also, um, as I said, one hospital ship is not enough. It depends on the disaster. It depends on the, uh, the type and um, size of the disaster. We need to prepare several ships, but it is not realistic to prepare all the types of ships. That requires um, non-governmental organization to prepare, maybe seek for uh, alliance with 
local ship companies and others to prepare a ship which can be utilized for the disaster. And uh, the, so far, the, uh, the vision is uh, the, the following. In order to evacuate people safely in a large-scale disaster, the usefulness of the ocean approach cannot be ignored. We define disasters as follows. Natural disaster, man-made disaster, including terrorism, uh, special uh, disasters, and forced uh, uh, infectious diseases contrain research and hospital ship design. In order to cope with these uh, disasters, it is effective to deploy comprehensively uh, from the sea by hostile ships with command and order centers and self-contained equipment. There are, we, um, our plan is to um, establish hospital ship in two, um, two steps. This is the second step. We are envisioning to establish a hospital ship which would have operation room, which uh, some of the military, cap uh, sorry, uh, some of the self-defense capability do not have uh, enough uh, operating room. The quality is not high enough to conduct uh, difficult operations. And with heavy bolt, maybe one or two. And that is a, a second step for us to take. And I, I'd like to introduce the organization. Uh, unfortunately, he could not make it, make it today, but Dr. Snada uh, is the founder and representative director of Mobile Hospital International. And we have um, one of the best um, leading scientists and medical doctors who leads uh, this industry and a whole academia. Uh, for example, um, Dr. Yokokura Yoshitake, who is the MDA PhD, Chairman of Japanese Medical Association. And um, we have very influential doctors. And from medical point of view, I believe doctors want to help um, when the disaster happens. And we need to have right um, system to engage doctors uh, to, be part, to be part of fighting against those disasters. And also, we need to train doctors when, even when a disaster is not happening. And thirdly, we need infrastructure, including hospital ships. And uh, now we learned, and we are learning, that uh, Olympic will be most likely postponed. And um, but we have official letter from Tokyo Fire Department. Uh, it is agreement that we will provide, as an organization, an uh, ambulance type of boat to help support uh, patients during Olympics. One of the challenges we found was, again, uh, geopolitically, um, most of the, the uh, competition will be held in line field area. So the tr transportation is limited to bridges. And um, but we do expect that the traffic will be very, very heavy during the Olympic. And we don't believe that's uh, good enough to transfer patients. And some of the, uh, the travelers are not used to the Japanese heat. And in order to move patients in a functional way, we believe uh, we will be able to provide one of the best way to transfer patient by providing this type of ambulance type of a ship. And there's a hospital uh, which is uh, connected to the dock. And um, that, is, that will be the second safest route for patients to be transferred. And now we have time to be prepared another year, I think. And we will be free trained and we'll be um, operating in a right manner. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to open for questions. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to take the first question. I'm just a bit confused about why Japan doesn't have these. Presumably it's something to do with Japan's uh, constitution. Is it something to do with a hangover from the war? Um, why America, as you said, has two hospital ships. China has one. Vietnam has one. Many other countries. The UK has one. Uh, I wasn't clear about why Japan doesn't have one. Right. So there's a very good point. And um, before... Before the end of World War II, I believe Japan has almost 30 hospital ships. 
ships, but it's all sunk uh, during the World War II. But then after World War II, there were some activities to set it up again, but every time someone uh, mentioned the word hospital ship, it has a direct um, kind of image related to the war. And by definition, hospital ships is, pre uh, is protected by Geneva Treaty, but that means the hospital ship belongs to military, in some, some force of military. And um, that became a type, a kind of um, taboo to be, to be discussed in Japan, I believe. And that was one of the challenging part. And question, uh, can we place this hospital ship, or maybe we should call it disaster, you know, ships, or whatever the name we come up with, to be outside of uh, military image? That is, that is a question. And that is a challenge we're fighting, too. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman at the back, I see your hand up. Um, can you come to the microphone here? And don't forget to give your name and affiliation. Thanks. Here you go. Thank you very much. My name is Nakano. I'm freelance. A uh, few questions. If we uh, have a hospital ship, how much do you think it'll cost one ship, and how much it'll also cost to keep one annually? I mean, if you can have any right. estimation. Yeah, thank you very much. So the, the second stage approach we are taking, uh, this ship, will, be, will cost a roughly $17 million. 17. 17. 17. Okay. US million dollars. And roughly $1 million to maintain per year. Do we also have to keep doctors and nurses every time? Uh, I don't expect to pay for the doctors. What we're going to do is uh, most likely this organization will implement some system to train doctors so that they will be prepared to get on a ship and uh, cope with various different um, uh, types of the disaster. And uh, Professor Yamaguchi is the head of Tokyo DMAT. And uh, he knows uh, way better than I do about how to train doctors and then how to uh, bring doctors in. But I believe doctors are willing to, uh, to be prepared. That is why they became doctors to begin with, I believe. But, yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah. So $17 million doesn't seem like a lot of money. Is it a small yeah. ship? This is a, a mid-sized boat. And if you want to build um, mercy and comfort type of ships, that's going to cost way bigger amount of money. Some say it's maybe 400 and 500 million dollars. But to be honest, to cope with the type of the disaster Japan, Japan is facing or has been faced in the past, I don't think we need that big ship. Um, what we need is we have to mobilize medical capabilities to fight with the emerging cases while self-defense force is uh, re-establishing road or some, um, you know, um, um, some capability to transfer patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as far as we can cope with the immediate needs with helicopter mm -hmm. and some operation room, I think that should be enough at the beginning, yeah. Um, the other thing I wasn't clear about was exactly the process by which you would get these boats. So you're an MPO. Uh, you presumably are lobbying the government to pay for these boats, is that right? Um, that's a part of the discussion. And um, there is, I would say, mood to, especially for, uh, now people remember the fight against COVID-19 on Diamond uh, Princess. Mm -hmm. uh, the image of uh, disaster ship or hospital ship, the necessity is still in our memory. Um, but yet, the, there is a question, should government pay for it? Because uh, there will be a question from taxpayers. How often do we use it? And it's like, it's like capitalism. No one wants to pay for something we won't use it, right? But someone got to prefer for it. So even for the government, um, especially for the cabinet, I think they are arguing um, whether they should fund it or not. So, but you do expect that the money would come from the state, not from private. It can be. Business. It can be combination. Uh, it can be combination. Um, can be part public. Can be part uh, donation. But we must find a way to establish this capability. Yeah. 
Any more questions from the floor? Working press first and then the rest of the room. <clears throat> Those all? Don't forget to tell us who you are. Good afternoon, uh, Rocky Swift with Reuters. Uh, two questions, if you don't mind. First, m one of the controversies of the Diamond Princess, and it's something we still don't really know, is if there was contamination through the, cir the circulation system, the ventilation, and how would you prevent such a contagion on a hospital ship? So that's one. Second, I just would like to take the opportunity to, to uh, put the question to two. Uh, medical doctors about testing in Japan for uh, the coronavirus. We've heard some reports that it's difficult for patients to get the tests if they have concerns. Could you give us your professional opinion about the testing regime in Japan and those patients that have found it difficult to get tests? Thank you. And for the first question, um, as I mentioned uh, in the speech, uh, the uh, hospital uh, is basically un, un, uh, suitable in dealing with the, the, the such epidemics. And uh, uh, I also told that the that, uh, uh, air conditioning system is uh, circulating vertically. vertically. And, and uh, if uh, this uh, COVID-19 COVID is uh, uh, has uh, 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 droplet uh, infection type, uh, you don't need to, to care uh, about that. But the, the, if the, the COVID-19 is the airborne or aerosol uh, infection type, you you need to care about that uh, air conditioning systems, and as you know, uh, basically the many uh, researchers uh, uh, believe that the, uh, the the this COVID-19 is uh, the droplet infection type, but still some uh, researchers uh, worry about the aerosol infection type. So in that case. Uh, we need to care that the uh, uh, vertical air uh, circulation. So, um, in that case, uh, that that uh, uh, horizontal zoning was uh, very very uh, uh, dangerous, and uh, that's a uh, uh, important problems. Just to clear, clear it up, in in the case of the Diamond Princess, I, s I seem to recall from your talk that you were saying most of the infections were spread by the staff by the catering staff, moving between people physically touching them or being in close contact. Uh, to answer Rocky's question then, um, the air circulation system, as far as we're aware, wasn't a big factor? Was not a big factor? Um, mainly, mainly that the uh, contact in infection is uh, more uh, important, uh, was impo more important. Was. Yeah. Uh, so second point, I'm, I'm not sure I'm the right, right person to answer the question, but um, what I understand is so far the, the mortality rate and mortality absolute number in Japan is very low with uh, COVID-19 associated death. So having less uh, tests is working quite well. And now other countries, including US and UK, other countries are following what we are doing in Japan. And at the end of the day, what it does matter is how many patients die and how, how many lives we can save. And uh, initial point, I remember uh, media was quite sensationary um, uh, writing about the issue of small number of tests in Japan. Mm -hmm. But as Dr. Um, Yamaguchi mentioned, we believe it is mainly infected through um, contact infection. The more distance you have, it's better. And by testing or by hospital to announce that they they can test more patients, that's going to cause mass crowds to come in, and that's going to trigger cluster infection. So at the end of the day, um, if you look into the the number of the death associated COVID nineteen, we can tell which strategy is the right one or not. Right. 
So you broadly think Japan is getting it right? I think uh, yeah, I think it's getting it right. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about uh, K1 uh, event. Uh, really <laughs> scared about it, to be honest. Huh. But um, other than that, I think Japan is doing great so far. Right. There was, there's a lot of talk online this weekend about the uh, Hanami parties that took place all over the city. Um, they were, to my mind, they were quite sparsely populated. You know, they were about half the numbers or right. less. Um, but, but presumably you would not have banned Hanami parties. You think that's fine because people are at a distance. Um, even if it's aerosol infection, uh, having right distance at the outside would be relatively safe, relatively safe. But if the issue of Hanami is some people use the same chopsticks to <laughs> take the same, you know, and sometimes they use maybe same cups and then that's going to be disastrous. So it, I, I my is it depends how each family or friends operate to avoid uh, contact infection. Yeah. Uh, any more questions from the floor, either working press or uh, from the rest of the audience? I have a couple more, but I'll hold fire if somebody has a pressing question. Um, can I just ask then specifically how this hospital ship would have helped in a case like this with the coronavirus? Right. Can you clear that up? Um, you mean Diamond Places case? or in, in, Let's say a similar epidemic takes place in the future and you get what you want, which is at least two hospital ships. How would that ameliorate a disaster like that? Right. Um, so my answer would be, I don't think it's going to be uh, so effective to have hospital ship to fight against infectious diseases like this. But what we can do is, as the United States is um, engaging Navy hospital ships, they can and we can in the future mobilize some of the medical capabilities. Maybe we can bring uh, more capability to test patients who, needs, who actually needs that testing or maybe transferring some of the additional um, therapeutic devices to the place where we, there is an outbreak. For example, um, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna be too pessimistic, but um, if there's a cluster infection happening in Japan, uh, Tokyo will be the place, right? And uh, although we have many hospitals in Tokyo, we might need more from suburban areas. How are we gonna mobilize? How are we going to mobilize doctors? How are we going to mobilize devices, uh, ventilators, ECMO? Um, good thing is Japan has a, a quite large number of ECMO. I believe we have 1,266 or something, which is unheard of if you compare it uh, for other uh, G7 countries. But at the end of the day, um, it has to be stationed at the place in the hospitals where doctors are trained. And that is, a, that is a question. And I think we can neutralize in, in that way, I believe. And are you able to say anything about the, the people who are resisting or the people who might be against this plan? Like you said, it has been hard work, an uphill struggle to get where you are. A lonely struggle, I think, is mm -hmm. the phrase you used. Why is that? It, it, does seem, it does seem in a country that's surrounded by the sea and has so many natural disasters, and that has to rely sometimes on American firepower or American help, as it did in 2011. Mm. Why is it such a hard argument to persuade the government to, to build a hospital ship or two? Um, there are several components here. Uh, Cost-benefit discussion, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, also, um, the nature of disaster is really hard to predict. And... Um, People, taxpayers, um, including senators, and um, they would like to make sure that we are paying for something for good reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a hard argument sometimes. You cannot predict future. And, um, and also the, the world hospital ship itself has some allergic re reaction to certain political group. Mm -hmm. And those are the main key factors based on my analysis. Um, question, can we overcome? I, I think we should, step by step. Yeah. And, and the, the resistance is bipartisan or is it coming from certain sectors of, particular sectors of the political class? Like in other words, are 
people from the LDP, for example, broadly supporting something like this? Or? I, I think so. I think so. Um, now, especially, so politicians can unite to the common theme, mm -hmm. and uh, healthcare is one. Healthcare is one. And uh, this is uh, this this one is um, is a really good theme for people to unite. Mm -hmm. um, then the remaining question is: we have to make sure that it's not associated with military capabilities, and um, the the plan itself should be cost beneficial overall. But that's something we are also actively looking into. Um, again, I don't f believe big one hospital ship will s save the day for Japan. We have to have broad, meaningful, and flexible uh, plan, rather than a one physical ship. That is what we need. And that's why we're actively talking to um, the Supreme Department and uh, the Ministry of um, Key Ministries in the, um, in the government. Um, any more questions on the floor? Yeah, uh, you, presumably you'll take questions just on the general coronavirus yeah. issue, will you? Yeah, those are. This one here. Thanks again. Um, in New York City, I mean, in the US, I think now there are more than 9,000 COVID-19 cases in New York City alone, and the number is still going up. So considering the number of hospital beds in the city, uh, how much do you think the uh, hospital ship can save or help people down there? Because people are already talking about the shortage of hospital beds in New York City, and the cases and the number is still going up. Um, my my guess, this is my guess. My guess is, um, as I as I said, the hospital ship, especially Mercy Navy, is not equipped to cope with infectious diseases. So even though they move the ship to New York, uh, they cannot function as hospital. They can function as hospital for um, trauma and other diseases, but not in this case. So they are stationed to cope with um, just supportive uh, function. I think. Um, I'm not entirely really sure how they're going to uh, cope with the shortage of medical staffs and medical capabilities. Um, can they transfer patients? Maybe not. I doubt. It's, it's really, even in Japan, it's really difficult to transfer uh, COVID-19 infect, infected patients. But I, I see cases uh, that doctors are, uh, hospitals are moving patients for, from one place to another. Maybe that's the only one solution. But... Um, um, I don't believe that the uh, the mercy or comfort is uh, very efficient to, to that uh, that uh, COVID nineteen. But uh, um, the the situation is getting worse and worse. And like that uh, Italy, uh, that the medical staffs uh, all med medical staffs will be uh, had, uh, um, exhausted very, very badly. So in that the situation that the hospital ships uh, plays another role, that uh, uh, they provide that uh, safety house for their medical staffs. So in the, in the uh, ship is completely safe, completely clear. So uh, the many uh, medical staff can uh, completely freely and uh, uh, and take a rest in the ship. Uh, and that's a very good uh, and uh, important law, I, I, I believe. For doctors and nurses, yes, mostly. Yes, yes, Okay. Exhausted, exhausted, very, very exhausted doctors and nurses. But it does sound, from what you're saying, it does sound like they're sending this ship to New York to deal with a crisis that it's not equipped to deal with. It cannot deal with uh, a pandemic, but it's not equipped to deal with uh, infections. So it can only be, uh, the interpretation I'm making there is that this is for show. Uh, it's not really a functioning uh, hospital in the way that we would expect, right? To, co to cover, for example, the question was about shortage of beds in New York. It cannot do that. Mm. Uh, 
But as you're reading, I'm reading the uh, the article which says um, they're opening up ho uh, sorry, uh, hotels to mm -hmm. be utilized, and mm -hmm. that'll be much easier, to be honest. So I think it depends, and we have to be very flexible how to utilize hospital ship mm -hmm. and then other resources on the ground. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a comprehensive plan. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions from the floor, either generally about, you can ask a question about the hospital ships or about the virus itself. It's a question about uh, hospital ships. I'm uh, Karine Nishimura, working for the s several uh, French media. Uh, Japan uh, uh, has a lot of remote islands who uh, have not hospital at all, and uh, some of these mm -hmm. islands can have uh, s s several thousand people uh, without hospital. So, uh, can this ship uh, easily be uh, <coughs> go to uh, to this island and to uh, to uh, uh, be used as a normal hospital in case of a disaster and so on? Um, I think so. And uh, one of the argument we had with the bipartisan federation is one of the senators asked the question that. Government's policy right now is to basically consolidate public hospitals. And uh, government thinks they're using too much budget for uh, hospitals. But if they do so, um, the, the hospital which is equi equipped with high level medical capability uh, will be decreasing. And then we will be, Japan will be more vulnerable for disasters like this. And one of the angle is, as you as you mentioned, uh, we can mo mobilize some of the highly equipped medical capabilities, including islands. And um, in the years to come, I think tele the combination with telemedicine and this kind of mobilized um, hospital capability will be something um, Japan will benefit really in the in the in the long term too. So that's uh, one of the usage for hospital ships uh, with you know, non-emergency cases. And um, I think it's a really good idea and an approach we should uh, actively consider. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions from the floor? Richard, were you going to ask a question? No? Anybody else? Um, just to, to go back to this, uh, Dozo, see myself, Dozo. Sorry, it's a general question about the uh, corona virus. I would like to, to know your opinion about why Japan is almost the only big country uh, to uh, uh, see a so low uh, contamination uh, compared, for example, to uh, uh, Europe, uh, uh, to France, Italy. Uh, I don't see any big difference in the way they are fighting against the virus. But the fact is that Japan uh, has a low cont contamination mm. uh, rate. Right. So, so just to, as background, when yeah. this whole issue with the Diamond Princess began, um, I'm trying to remember the dates. I think it was uh, February, early February. Yeah. Um, at the time, Japan had the second largest cluster of infections in the world, so it's since gone down completely off the chart, and it does puzzle a lot of people why exactly, uh, despite not locking the country down in the way that other parts of the world have, why has it managed to cut this? I, I must emphasize this is just a guess, not based on any scientific um, point. But um, in general, Japanese people really tend to comply with the, the suggestion from the government and basically follow the rules. That's one, except K1 issue. <laughs> um, that is a major uh, major point. And second, we don't shake hands, hugs, and that's another big thing. And um, if you look into the European countries, the number is just so unbelievably high and quick. And it must be it must have something to do with contact infection and question how do people contact, right? We don't have custom to shake hands. We just we just bow. <laughs> So maybe that's the thing. Maybe that's a new uh, de facto standard way people to greeting in the world from now on. This is a new era, right? 
So the whole world will be bowing from now on. Yeah, from all over the world. <laughs> I can't see the Italians giving up their hugs for bows, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and what about masks? Do you have any thoughts on masks? Because um, the questionnaire, for example, was wearing one. There's all sorts of controversy and discussion about that. Do you think they work? <laughs> um, I, I, I believe it's uh, um, efficient in that uh, very um, small area, small, small, um, tight and uh, um, small, uh, small room, and many, uh, many people gathering in the situation. Uh, but the uh, um, uh, Um, I, I, I mentioned before that uh, the, some, some researchers uh, uh, think that the, the, the aerosol or uh, airborne infection, in that case, is no efficient. No efficient so. so limited efficiency. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's also a lot of talk about the um, possibility that the statistics in Japan are artificially low. Uh, that in fact there's a second wave coming, a second wave of, of infections coming at some point. Uh, possibly, if you see in uh, Kansai at the moment, there's a cluster of infections there. Um, would you care to comment on that? The possibility, in other words, that we haven't seen the worst that this could return. Um. Now we focus that the young people uh, who are no symptoms, but uh, they have uh, already infected. That's a very, very interested um, um, people. So uh, our next focus is that kind of young people. Um, and uh, in this uh, spring, uh, spring vacations, they uh, back to the, the all over the country or all over the world. Uh, world, mm -hmm. and then can, uh, can, uh, will come back in this one or two weeks. So um, they are uh, um, very healthy and no symptoms, but uh, they have uh, really uh, infected. So uh, that's uh, those people will spread the, that uh, 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 COVID-19 to the, the older peoples. That, that's a, another uh, bad scenario. Right, because the schools are, my, my own son is off school, but he's due to return. Uh, is it next week or the week? I don't know, very soon he's due to return. Are you saying the school should not reopen until the, perhaps after the spring break or? Um, so um, maybe the, um, y yesterday, uh, Tokyo government uh, uh, governor, uh, uh, announced that that, that uh, we need the uh, school close period or uh, more longer. So you you support that? You support yes, that? Yes. Would you care to say until how long the schools should close for? Maybe until the the uh, early of May. That's, so the, 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 that's the uh, um, next turning point. So after Golden Week? Yes. After Golden Week? Yes, yes. Thank you. Exactly. Uh, this, do you mind if this, Richard goes first? Oh, same question. Would you agree with this proposition? Uh, yes, as, as a medical doctor, I do agree. As a father of four kids, um, homeschooling is just killing a family. So <laughs> anyway, it's just a joke. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Um, this lady again, if you don't mind, and then Richard. Uh, in case uh, um, the pandemic uh, became also very serious in uh, in Japan, do you think it would be possible to uh, apply the same uh, policy than in France or in Italy, which is a lockdown? I don't know about know much about the how people comply in France. Uh, if they, I mean, the uh, which policy do you specifically? Lockdown. 
locking down the country? Uh, locking down the country. Um, practically, that is the most effective way. If you can live with the economic pain, you're going to have to suffer. Um, basically, if you can keep lockdown for two weeks, you're going to pretty much can cut the infection, right? So it's the most effective, but it's, all, it's also a side, side effect for, for economy is really, really tough. Um, that's the balance I think all the government trying to handle. But my guess is at the end of the day, um, no leader can really take the risk to be point-fingered in years to come that he killed X number of the people due to his policy. So my guess is all the government just keep on shutting down uh, and then economy will just sink. And that's the consequence, only one consequence I, I can see. So, so you think, in other words, if it gets, if the pandemic returns in Japan and it gets bad, that the government will shut down uh, the country or try to? My, my guess in Japan is they will find a way to balance it some way. Uh, we have been doing so. I don't know why Japanese government can do it and other government cannot do it. I don't, I don't clearly understand it. But um, so far, um, somehow, Japanese government has been maneuvering it well. Um, next step can be, um, might be more severe steps. Um, but yet, I, I believe we would be able to maneuver it. And it's mainly because people mostly comply with uh, the rules. Yeah. Uh, Richard? Uh, yeah, so if, if you could, re if we can refocus on the issue of, of testing uh, again, uh, the argument seems to be that you can't fight that which you can't see. And uh, with asymptomatic patients supposedly passing on the, the disease, uh, uh, I'd like to know uh, again your opinions uh, as to the uh, efficacy of, uh, uh, of testing. Uh, uh, perhaps if uh, there's another outbreak here in, in Japan, the government will be accused of, of, of not testing. Uh, uh, I could even think of some worse uh, scenarios, uh, but I, I won't mention those right now. But yeah. if you can address those, I'd appreciate it. So, so should the government test more? Right. So I think the uh, the point is uh, I <laughs> um, so um, statistically, it makes sense to test, but from therapeutic, therapeutic point of view, especially to save patients' life, it doesn't make much sense still, because um, the number of the most of the patients that are symptomatic, and then even if they are found to be positive, all they have to do is just self quarantine for two weeks, right? And then the point is, why don't everybody do it to start with? And if we can do it, and we are doing okay so far, um, that approach is, makes much more sense than testing everybody. Uh, there will be so many uh, positive false patients and the vice versa. And it doesn't simply work um, if you think about the risk of infecting another patients. That's, I think that's the conclusion medical community is um, coming up to. So testing more people would bring more people to hospital who yeah, would infect right. others, yeah? Um, yes, um, from the viewpoint of the yes. public health, the, the test is uh, uh, some meaning, has some meaning. But uh, now uh, um, I'm, I'm a, a director of the uh, Reverend Trump Center in Tokyo Metropolitan Government. So um, now uh, our focus is uh, uh, to treat the, the severe patient. So in, in this uh, season, uh, if we have a, a very severe pneumonia, uh, we, we believe that's the pos positive patient. And so um, uh, 
um, positive or negative is, is no meaning in the in the uh, uh, in the hospital now, especially in the the um, level one trauma center in in Tokyo metropolitan area. It, it, we're out of time, but just to, I mean, the obvious question that comes to mind is why does it appear to have worked in Korea, or at least Korea has, South Korea has won a lot of praise mm -hmm. for um, aggressive testing mm -hmm. of uh, coronavirus patients, and the statistics seem to back that up, the, the, the number of people has fallen. Mm -hmm. um, a clear contrast to Japan. Is there any reason? Is there something we're missing there? Because it does seem like it works in Korea. Um, what I... What I understand is they have prior experience with SARS, yeah. and after the SARS, are, um, the private sectors build up the capability to test, that's one thing. And second, uh, during that experience, they are trained to not to infect other potential patients. And these are all you know, experience-based, tra uh, training-based uh, capabilities, I think. And Japan was, not, Japan was not exposed to SARS at the level of Korea or Taiwan has been in the past. So if you have the same, if you apply the same policy, I, I believe that caused a disaster here in Japan. But so the, now we experienced it, maybe next time we can test more patients and generally people are well trained. And again, coming back to the hospital ship, that is the whole purpose of training. If you're trained, we can cope with way better strategies that we can bring to the next level. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's, um, it's a very interesting subject, and um, I think we could probably talk about it a bit more. Are you happy to take more questions sure. after the yeah. talk, if people have some? Uh, do a meishi call kind of whatever. Uh, well, thanks so much to, um, to Kagimoto-sensei and to Yamaguchi-sensei for coming today and talking to us. I'm particularly impressed that Kagimoto-sensei coming, and he has four children. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I really feel your pain. Um, uh, do show your appreciation to them, please, for coming today and talking to us. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.